Welcome to Electron Online. In this video, we're going to talk about the bridge network. It's also known as the bridge circuit. It's a very unique circuit in electronics. Here you can see that we have a source. There's a branch up here. It splits up, then it comes back together. But then there's another resistor that runs from the one corner over here to the other corner over there. That means that it's very difficult to figure out the current in the circuit and the current in each of the branches. There's actually six different currents that we need to worry about here. And let me show you why. Here's the total current. Let's just call that I total. Then the I total splits up into two branches. Let's call this I1 and let's call this I2. Then you can see that I1 continues to this node right here. Part of that current will go into this branch. Part of the current will continue over here. Let's call this current I3 and let's call this current I4 then I3 joins up with I2 will continue in this direction as I6 so let's call this I6 and then I6 and I4 come together and form back into I total which is the same as the I total over there so essentially there are six unknowns in the circuit we could use Kirchhoff's rules to try and figure out what these are we can find some of the equations by looking at the nodes and simply summing up the currents that enter the node and summing up, summing up the currents that leave the node. For example, one equation could be I total equals I1 plus I2. Over here at this node right here, we have one current entering, two currents leaving. So the second equation could be I1 equals I3 plus I4. Then we have this node right here. We have two currents entering, one current leaving. So equation number three can be I2 plus I3 equals I... I don't want to call it I6. I think I want to call this I5 so that it matches the resistance R5. So let's call that I5. And then coming together here, I can call this another equation. I can say that R4 plus I5 entering this node is equal to I total leaving the node. So I4 plus I5 equals I total. At this point, we have four equations and we have six unknowns. We're missing two more equations to solve this problem. The next two equations can be found by using Kirchhoff's second rule. That rule says that if we go around any loop, any closed loop, and add up all the voltages, those should add up to zero. So here I have one loop, here I have another loop. Let's call this loop one and loop two. Let's start at this location right there and go around each loop and come up with two more equations and see what we get. So for the fifth equation, we're going to use loop one, starting from this point. I move up against the current, therefore I have a voltage rise. That would be the current times the voltage, and I forgot to write my one there. Let's call this I1. And so the voltage rise would be five times I1, the resistance times the current. Then I come here with the same direction as the current, that's the voltage drop, minus 10 times I2. And finally then to complete the loop, I go against the current right here, that's the voltage rise, plus two, times I3, and that adds up to zero. So there's equation number five. And finally, to get my sixth equation, I can go around this loop starting at this point, number six. I move with the current, that's the voltage drop, minus two R3. With the current, minus, that's the voltage drop, six times I5. And then here I go against the current, that's the voltage rise, plus four times I4 and that adds up to zero. And there's my six equations that I can use to solve my six unknowns. Now, working this out is basically an algebra problem or a matrix problem. You could put it into matrix, you can turn it into an algebra problem where you begin to eliminate these variables one at a time. For example, I can eliminate I total by calling it equal to I1 plus I2. So wherever I see an I total, I simply replace it by I1 plus I2 probably over here, so call this I1 plus I2, and I total disappears. Now I have five equations, five unknowns, and I keep on eliminating those variables. 
I'm not going to work it out completely here because I would need a lot more board space than I have available, but at least you can see how the problem is set up and how to work it out. But actually, there's an easier way to do this. There's another technique that we can use to turn something that looks like a triangle into a Y-shaped circuit. That's called the delta to Y conversion. In the next video, I will show you how to do that so that we can find the total current in the circuit in a much easier fashion. At least, you now know how to use Kirchhoff's laws to at least solve a bridge circuit like this or a bridge network. But let me show you in the next video the delta to Y conversion to see how you can actually work this out a lot simpler. Stay tuned for that one.